Who has the edge in the WNBA Rookie of the Year race? The Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese rivalry isn't ending anytime soon. This week, one of them will be awarded the WNBA Rookie of the Month award for June and, in turn, set off another round of discourse about the two players. Until now, the discourse has largely focused on comments made off the court, the severity of fouls, and league ticket sales and ignored what the two remarkable rookies have accomplished on the court. But in June, both Reese and Clark took their games to new levels. Reese had a double-double in 10 of the 11 games she played last month, as her scoring average increased by 3.5 points and her rebounding average jumped from a solid 8.2 per game to a league-leading 13.2 in June. Forget about Rookie of the Month, those numbers are good enough to garner consideration for Player of the Month. Clark, meanwhile, averaged over 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists in June, just the fourth time in WNBA history that a rookie has hit those benchmarks over the course of a month. After pulling off the same feat in May, Clark now has two out of those four instances. And she did all that while improving her shooting percentages, cutting down on turnovers, and leading the Fever to a 7-4 record. Whether Clark repeats as Rookie of the Month or Reese ends up getting the award, last month showed that the race for WNBA Rookie of the Year remains tight and will only get more interesting as these two, along with a few other notable rookies, continue to elevate their respective games. With just a few weeks before the WNBA goes on its Olympic break, let's check in on the players in that race and where things currently stand. Caitlin Clark, Indiana Fever Clark capped off a historically prolific first half of her rookie season on Sunday with a win over the Phoenix Mercury and the greatest WNBA player of all time, Diana Taurasi. That's an official title, by the way. This wasn't necessarily a passing of the torch moment, the 42-year-old is not considered the league's best active player, but it had to feel satisfying for Clark to beat someone who was seen as one of her more vocal skeptics heading into the season. Reality is coming. Tarasi told ESPN Scott Van Pelt back in April after Iowa took down the Yukon Huskies in the Final Four. There's levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. You see it on the NBA side, and you're going to see it on this side. You look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Early in Sunday's game in Phoenix, the grown women on the Mercury gave Clark issues. Collier Copper, a three-time WNBA All-Star, hounded Clark on the defensive end, and that pressure led to some early turnovers and an early 17-4 hole for Indiana. But as she had done after a slow start to the season, Clark relaxed, she stopped trying to force passes and shots that weren't open, and everything fell into place. In the Fever's 88-84 win, the rookie guard finished just when rebound shy of making history as the first rookie to record a triple-double. That helped her finish the month of June with a 15-6-7 line on 41% shooting. As Clark's shot volume has gone down over the past few weeks, her quality of play has improved across the board. In her last six games, Clark ranks in the top 20 league-wide in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks, per WNBA stats. She's making 46.4% of her shots from the field and over 40% of her attempts from three. Tarasi's comments from April now look a bit silly, but that's largely because they were misrepresented in the first place. Van Pelt's question was not about Clark specifically, but rather the entire draft class, which included a handful of high-profile prospects. And Tarasi's answer was more nuanced than the reality is coming soundbite that got so much attention. She added this after that initial comment. Not saying it's not gonna translate, because when you're great at what you do, you're just gonna get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. Clark is still working through that transition period and has had to sacrifice some of the scoring that captured the basketball world's attention during her time at Iowa. So far in the WNBA, she's acting mostly as a three-point shooter and distributor. She'll need to add a mid-range game to reassert herself as an elite scorer, and she'll have to get stronger to better handle the on-ball pressure she sees on a nightly basis. Clark leads the WNBA in turnovers, and while her teammates have been responsible for some of them, most of her giveaways are due to suspect handles and overly ambitious passes. You can watch all of them here and judge for yourself. But even with Clark's bloated turnover totals dragging down her efficiency, it's clear that she has been the WNBA's best rookie so far this season. She leads all rookies in just about every statistical category outside of rebounding. She has Indiana in line to make the playoffs after finishing with the league's worst record a season ago. 
And even when you widen the scope and compare her rookie season to those of the best players in the league, Clark stands out. How Clark's rookie season stacks up with other notable rookies. Player points rebounds assists points shot at. Points possession Caitlin Clark 16. 25.76.91.140.A2 Aya Wilson 20.7A2.21.060.99 Brina Stewart 18.39.33.41.151.00 Sabrina Ionescu 11.75.76.11.060.82 Julia Lloyd 10.73.91.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.